Welcome back to another LP Gallery tutorial. Let's talk about a PowerPoint tool that many PowerPoint users are probably not familiar with. It's called the Selection Pane. And it's a useful tool if you have a lot of objects on your slide and you're concerned about their stacking order, where you're trying to move things up the stacking order or down the stacking order, where you want something behind something else, or you want to bring something up over something else. You could use the menus or you could use the right click to send things forward or backwards, but that gets to be a lot of problems. There's a lot of objects. An easy way to rearrange the stacking order is to use the selection pane. So let's take a look at it. First of all, you have to select something. You go to format and there's your selection pane. So here it is. So you can see I have a text box and the selection pane tells you that text box. Now the number you'll see by these things are just the order they were created in. Other than the order they were created in, they really don't mean much. You're going to see that in a minute. So we have a text box and it's called text box and it's got a number one. Now if I click on it, you can see I can select it. One of the advantages, of course, of the selection pane is if you have a lot of objects on your slide, trying to cycle through them is a lot easier just to click on them right here in the selection pane. So we're going to create some more objects. I'm going to show you how this kind of all works. So let's say we want a rectangle. So let's draw a rectangle and it says rectangle two. So again, the numbers just refer to the order the object was created. Now let's take a circle and let's give that just a little different color. Maybe we'll make it an orange. Now let's go take a triangle and let's give that a color. Maybe we'll make it a yellow and we'll do one more. So let's grab a star and maybe we'll give that a color and let's make that maybe a green. Okay. So let's take a look here and see what's happening. Okay. So you can see we have text box one, rectangle two, oval three, triangle four, and five point star five. And again, these numbers just mean the order that they were created. Other than that, they don't really don't play any part in anything. How the selection pane works is this. This is a stacking order. As you know, anytime you work in PowerPoint, no two things can occupy the same stacking order. Something's always above something. Something's always below something. That's just the way it works. The stacking order means this. At the top, that's the top item. So right now, the five-point star is the top item. It is above everything. You can clearly see that. Now the text box, that's at the bottom. So it is behind everything. And you can see that. You can change your stacking order. PowerPoint is showing you how these things are stacked up. Now, if you want to change them, no problem. So let's say I've got the five pointed star. I want it behind triangle here. I have two choices. I have these up and down arrows, which move the object up and down the stacking order, or I can just drag. So for this first one, I'll just use the arrow. Okay, so now you can see it's underneath. The star is underneath the triangle, so it's behind it. So that's pretty well how it works. This is your stacking order. PowerPoint is showing you that. Again, the numbers really aren't relevant. They're just telling you the order the objects were created. So just focus on this part. You can just ignore the, uh, the actual numbers. Okay, now the eyeball. What does the eyeball do? The eyeball will show or hide things. So if I didn't want to see the star, I could click the eyeball. It'll disappear. You'll see a line there. Once it's disappeared, you can't select it, you can't move it, you can't do anything with it. This is very useful if you create complex background items or illustrations like I do in PowerPoint, and I need to have objects stay and not move. Something like if you put a nice background object and you have things on top of it and you're trying to move them around, you don't want to move the background object. So if you hide the background object, then you can move the things on top freely without interfering or affecting the background object. So we're actually going to show you how that works. So just know that the eyeballs will hide an object. So it'll make it disappear. And that means you cannot select it or move it. Okay. So it's a good way for positioning things where you don't want them to move. Most things you do in PowerPoint, you're probably going to end up grouping things together. So let's do that. Let's take these two and let's group them. Okay. Now the group. Now let's take a look and you can see it says group six. So again, the group was created after these things are created. So again, the numbers just indicate the order the things were created. So group six is now another item and it contains the oval and the triangle. So it gets its own number. So again, don't worry about the numbers here. They're just telling the order they were created. So group is actually a created element. Okay. Now let's take these two and let's group these two. Okay. So we have another group. So again, the number indicates another element's created and that's what it means. Group seven contains the triangle and the star. 
if you don't want to see the individual items in there, generally you collapse them like this. Now I'm going to show you when you create your own illustrations, and I do that a lot, how they can be quite complex looking. So I always like to collapse down to groups so I don't have to see the individual items. So you're going to see how that works out in another illustration. And so here's our groups. We can collapse them or we can open them. Okay, so pretty clear what that is. We can also rename these groups. Now I won't do it here, but I'll do it with another project to show you. So right now we'll just know that we can rename the groups. This group 7 sits on top of group 6. So if I drag it over, you can clearly see that. It's on top of the list. It is sitting on top. You can actually move the stacking order within the group. So let's take the triangle. So right now, the triangle is above the star. So if I drag it over, you can see that. But I can drag this down, or use the arrow key down, and it's now below. So you can see that. So you can actually change the stacking order within a group. You can't drag one of these things into another group, though. There's many programs that allow you to do that, but PowerPoint doesn't. So you will not be able to transfer one of these items into another group. So this group is right now on top. You can see that. And I'm going to change it, so I'm going to just drag it underneath 6 here. And when you drag slow, you see how it opens up? You just got to kind of drag it to the bottom like that. Okay, so now group 7 is underneath. So there it is, stacking order of your groups. And that's basically how it works. So the selection pane shows you what you have on your slide and shows you the order they were created, which really doesn't matter all that much. When you create groups, you create a separate element with the components inside of it. And it allows you to move your individual elements up and down within the group, changing the stacking order. But you cannot take an element from one group into another group. You can't do that. Now, if I were to take this and ungroup it, take that. The group name is gone, and this goes back to being just the individual objects that they were. Now, if I select this, and I group it, and you can see it's called group 8. So, again, if I, if I ungroup it, so we're back to single elements. If I select it, so once again, if I group this, now if you look, you see group 10. You go... What's happening here? How come we got to 10? When you group something, it's an element. This is how PowerPoint considers it. When you ungroup it, the element, although it doesn't exist as a group, it's still a step. So when you group it again, it goes to the next step. So that's why you get a different number. So you can think of these numbers again just as steps. So if I were to ungroup it again and group it again, what's the group going to be called? It's going to be called group 11. Again, the numbers really aren't that important. So anyways, that's a little bit about the selection pane and how it works, how you can group things, ungroup things, move things through it. So the next step is to show you how to take something a little more complex and have the selection pane organize things very nicely for you. We have a complex illustration here. Now here's our selection panel, and if I scroll down, there's many, many elements here. Now the idea when you create complex illustrations is not to get bogged down in the detail. So let me click on this. Here's a sunflower. So I'm making a nice sunflower illustration. Now if I scroll down, let's see if we can find it. It will be the one that will be selected. There it is. So it's called a group 7, and these are all the components in it. So I used a cloud shape. I used an oval shape. I used a, a freeform shape. I used a star in here. And then we get to the petals. Okay, so each one of these petals is actually a grouped object. So it has uh, multiple little shapes within them. We can actually rename all these things, but we don't want to do that. So we don't want to get bogged down in the actual details. So when you create complex objects like this, complex illustrations, every time you open the PowerPoint presentation, PowerPoint, for whatever reason, exposes every grouped element there. And that looks confusing. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is collapse all these into major groups. You do not want to look at subgroups unless you want to do some modification. So all I have to do is just click on my collapse arrow and collapse all the groups. And once I do that, it's not going to be as bad as it looks. Take a look. Looks much better. So generally, when you're working with complex things that you've grouped together, you want to collapse them right away. So, okay, so you don't get bogged down in the detail. That looks pretty good. And again, I can hide things, right? I can show things. Okay, so let's see how this works. Now I've got a nice background here. And they're all individual things. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the background. So I'm going to select everything here and I'm going to group it. So you can see it's highlighted all the individual things that are part of the background. I'm going to do a group and we get that. Now what we want to do is name these things. Now group 1223, group 929, group 1, group 7. What does that mean? None of these things mean anything. So the next important step is to always rename your group so you know what they are. This is group 1. So this is this one here. This is our background called group 1. So I'm going to just click in there and call it background. Now let's see what the rest of these things are. What's this? Oh, that's the sunflower. I'm going to call this profile. So it's a profile of sunflower. I'll just call it profile. Hit the enter to finish it. Now what's that? I'm going to click on that one. Oh, that's a bud. So I'm going to call that bud one because we have two of them. I'll call this bud one. Now let's go and see what this is. That's the sunflower. So I'm going to click in there, get rid of that, call it sunflower. Now I'm going to take that one. What's that one? That's a leaf. So I'm going to click in there, call it leaf one because I'm probably going to create more. Now what's this one? That's the other bud. So I'm going to click in there. I'm going to call that bud two. And what's this one here? That's a little side leaf. So I'm going to cl click there. I'm going to just call it a side leaf. I'll just call it side one. It's a side leaf. And what's this last one? That's the vase. So I'm going to click in there and call that vase. By the way, if you want to learn how to create this, we have a video on how to create sunflowers. We actually have a series of videos on how to create flowers with PowerPoint. So this is one of them, creating sunflowers in a vase. So you can catch that if you're interested in creating flowers. They're, they're, they're actually quite easy. It looks complicated, but it's actually quite easy. We teach you how to use the picture tools for nice picture effects that you can do with vectors. So things like the vase, the leaves, the sunflowers, they have these nice picture effects applied to them to make them look more textured. Okay, so let's get on with this. And I'm going to just move this. The first thing's first. Let's put the vase. Whoops. Where's the vase? If I put the vase, I want to put it on top of the shelf. It's not going on top of the shelf. It's going behind the background because the vase is at the bottom of the list. That means it's behind everything. So the background has to be at the bottom of the list. And again, you can uh, use your arrow keys. I'd rather just drag them. But again, you could use your arrow keys. I just find the arrow keys a little slow. Okay, let's put the vase there. Now let's take our sunflower and let's put it on top. So now we've got a sunflower. Now I put shadows on these things just so you can see them a little better. The shadows will cross over when things cross over. So it's a little easier to see what's forward and backward, things of that nature. Let's say I want to take this and I want to put it behind the sunflower. Well, right now it is in front of the sunflower, so that's not going to help. So it's called a profile, it has to go below the sunflower. So I'm going to just drag it and now it's below the sunflower. Simple as that. So let's see, let me take this bud and that's in front of the sunflower. No, that's not going to help. So it has to go behind the sunflower. So I'm going to drag it. It is now behind the sunflower. Okay. Now let's take this bud. Let's drag it over. Hey, that one works out pretty good. So you can see that the bud too is behind the sunflower. So it looks pretty good there. Okay. That looks pretty good. Maybe I'll just rotate some of these things a bit. Okay, good. So now we've got our little sunflowers. So let's take this and that works out pretty good. That's exactly where I want it. I want it there. Now I'm going to create another leaf. Let's take a look at this. So it obviously goes to the top of the list. I'm going to collapse that. Now we have two leaf ones because it takes the same name. Leaf one, leaf one. Well, that's not useful. So this is now going to be called leaf two. So I'm going to rotate this. And I want this to go underneath the sunflower, but because it was just created, it is on top of the sunflower. So I'm going to drag it underneath the sunflower. Now it's below the sunflower. Okay, so now we got that. That looks pretty good. Now I think I need a couple more. So I'm going to just take this one, duplicate that. And again, it's called leaf one. We need to change that. So that's going to be leaf three. And let's say I'm going to rotate this. And I like this to go behind the sunflower. So let's go behind the sunflower. And you can see how that's working out. Now one more. Let's take another one of these. And let's drag it the other way. And that guy has to go behind the sunflower also. So you can see how easy it is to do this by using the selection pane. 
Okay, now, just saw there how I moved the background, and that's the problem. When you put things on backgrounds, sometimes the backgrounds move around when you're trying to get the other objects. So in this case, the background, I know it's there. I don't need to see it. So I'm going to hide my background. I know it's there. I don't need to see it. Now I don't have to worry about accidentally selecting my background. So that's one of the advantages of hiding things. Okay, now I'm going to take maybe one more. And that one's called Leaf 3. We've got to change that. We'll call that 5. And let's maybe put that up here. I think I'd like this to go to the very back. So I'm going to take Leaf 5 and put it just above the background. So it's there. I think I like that. So it goes in the back. Pretty good. Now, of course, because it's in the back, it's going to be really hard to select. So if I want to select this and all these are on top, it makes it really hard to select. So what I do, I select it to the selection pane. So another advantage of the selection pane. When you do things like this, remember they're stacked on top of each other. Sometimes it's hard to get the thing that's behind something. Okay, so we got one of these guys. Let's put that here. And we have um, a little kind of a half open leaf here. Now we have a nice little arrangement with sunflowers. And we can clearly see the stacking order here. And if we need to select something that we can't get, well, we just click out on here. Now let's put the background back on. So that kind of gives you a, a pretty good overall view of the selection pane. And it's a very useful tool if you have multiple elements on your slide and you're trying to control them, especially if they overlap. That's really where you need the selection pane. Like in this illustration, they're all overlapping. It's really hard to do this without the selection pane. I would really hate to have to go right click, bring to front, send backward, bring forward, whatever. That's, that's really just too slow and it gets kind of frustrating. The selection pane makes your job a lot easier. Again, if you want to see how we created these sunflowers, we do have a video. I'll leave the link in the description. So if you want to learn how to create the sunflowers and other flowers in PowerPoint, I know they look complex, but they, were, they weren't really complex. They're simple shapes made into complex looking shapes. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a like, and we hope to catch you on our other videos. So thank you for watching.